gone. When we're looking at multiplication, that simply just means exactly what you guys think. Multiply f of x times g of x. The nice thing about multiplication in comparison with adding and subtracting, we don't need common denominators. We just simply need to multiply the numerator times the numerator, denominator times the denominator. Right? There it is. Okay. So we get x plus 3 over x squared plus x. And then again, I'm just going to ask you for the domain. So multiplying them was actually pretty simple, right? Literally, barely anything mathematically I had to do. Finding the domain, again, we have to look at our constraints. The constraints are the same thing as the last problem, right? x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And x squared plus x equals 0. Whatever values equal 0 are not in the domain, which we know as x cannot equal 0 and x cannot equal negative 1, right? And x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. So our domain is exactly the same as the last problem. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3, but it can't equal negative 1 and can't equal 0. So again, starts at negative 3. Because again, what happens if negative 3 is in the numerator? Or what if that's negative 3? That's 0, right? But that's fine, because negative 3 doesn't make the denominator 0. Only 0 and negative 1 make the denominator 0. So that's why negative 3 is included. But negative 1 is not included, because if you plug in negative 1, it makes the denominator 0. And then just connect them with the union. 